everybody, it's Chris here from Off-Road Farm. We finally got our disc brake conversion done. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. Uh, everything went together pretty easy. I only ran into one small problem that we'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, I got my conversion kit from lugnut4x4.com. It's a guy up in northeast Tennessee. Uh, no affiliation or anything. Um, he sells a lot of disc brake conversion kits uh, for a lot of the older straight axles. Uh, has a lot of options as far as what you want to get. Uh, you can kind of piece together the kit depending on what you need. Um, I did upgrade to the emergency uh, brake calipers, uh, which was a little bit of a pricier upgrade. Just because I live here around the mountains of Tennessee, so I need to be able to use a parking brake sometimes. Uh, so I thought it was worth the extra money. Um, as far as the kit itself, everything went together really well. The only issue I ran into was something I just wasn't paying attention to. It was a steel issue. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. All right, so a tip that I recommend. Before we put this seal in, we're going to go ahead and put our studs, mount our rotor. We're going to take our bearing. We're going to go over to our axle. We're going to go ahead and mount it up with no rear seal. Make sure that our brackets, everything is in line. The reason that we're doing that is that I don't want to put that seal on. Put it on. It's not lined up, then I have to take it back off. It just increases the chance that we could damage that seal somehow. All right, they're all in. So let's go over to the axle and make sure everything lines up. All right, so before you paint everything, I recommend you go ahead and trial fit. Make sure it's gonna work. Make sure it's gonna fit. Ended up, after I got mine all together before painting, I had to put one of these washers as a spacer between the bracket and the flange to move my caliper a little bit closer to my rotor. So I'm glad I knew that before I got everything painted and put together and then I didn't, I didn't have a washer. So this goes pretty simple. Flanges, the bend out, if you use one that has a bend or if you use spacers would go behind. Bolt then washer and just get one started. I'm going to do that all the way around. I don't know what the torque specs is on these, but we'll just let this get it tight. And that'll be pretty tight. First tip, or piece of advice, is to move the little tub that caught your grease, or axle oil that came out of there. Move it out of the way for when you drop your brake pads, and you will. You don't drop them right into your oil. Ask me how I know that. So we're just going to set this on there. Careful with that back bearing since there's no seal to hold it in place.
Tap very gently. smooth so when I'm tapping that out hit on this inner ring we don't want to hit on the outer ring and that's why we didn't put the rear seal in Like at one point in time, this thing had a bearing go bad in it. So notice I didn't go crazy with it. So we still have our seal out. Much better. Now we got it to where that bearing slides up on there. Much better. I went to two different parts stores and nobody had the nut or the socket that I needed for this spindle nut. So we made one. Alright, so when you go to put your caliper on, you want to leave the outside brake pad in because of this lip that's on it right there. You can't get it on. You cannot get it in there after you've got your caliper in your bracket. So you have to hold it in there while you get it started. Take your inside pad, it might be a little tight first. You don't have everything lined up yet. Now we're just going to snug it up. Make sure everything looks good. So 
that looks good. Now we can take it all back apart, put in our rear seal, and actually assemble it like we need to. Alright, before you drive your seal, make sure you put your bearing in. Easy to forget, especially if you're distracted. Make sure you drive your seal the right way in. Open part goes down. Have to use a block of wood. Grease the lip of your seal so it can slide up where it needs to nice and easy. Don't want anything tearing. Set your studs back. Be real careful since your seal is on here now. Well, I do not believe that seal is right. Not even close. Alright, so that's when I figured out I had a problem when it wouldn't fit. So, whenever I was tearing everything down, breaking it apart, I wasn't paying attention to my seals. I just knocked them both out, threw them in a scrap bucket. And the driver, I'm sorry, the passenger side went on just fine. It was the driver's side. Whenever I finally got everything together, put the seal in, went to go put it on, it wouldn't fit. So, I went back and I looked at my old seal, and it turns out it was a Stemco seal. Um, I tried to go to two different parts stores. They had no idea what I was talking about, had never even heard of a, st of a Stemco seal. My father-in-law, who's a diesel mechanic, he knew exactly what it was. So if any of you guys run into this issue, you have a Stemco seal and you can't find a parts store who knows what you're talking about, go to a diesel shop. Go to a big truck store where they carry parts. They're probably going to know exactly what it is. He was able to order it for me, get it to me in just a couple of days. So what it is, where the sealing surface goes bad, they just give you a new ring to go over that bad sealing surface. It's not like a thin speedy sleeve, it's, it's a pretty substantial piece of metal. Um, it actually came apart really easy. I was scared we might have to cut it off or heat it off. We were able to knock it off really without even pounding on it at all. The new one went on just as easy. We just used a piece of steel, we didn't have a piece of brass big enough and just knocked it on pretty nice and easy. Went on, just try to keep it straight. It went on easy, didn't have any problems and we put our new seal in to match up with this with this new sealing surface and now we're good to go the preload on this bearing should be 50 foot pounds Now 
let's see where our hole is for a key. You're supposed to then advance to the next one. So here's the finished uh, disc brake conversion kit. Got the rotors installed, calipers, all the brake pads, everything. I still haven't hooked up the lines. I'm going to wait on that for a while. I got a lot of other stuff I need to do first. Um, overall, everything went, went pretty well.